Carla Hinton reporting for the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. I'm here today in our studio with Adam Sultani. He is the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations here in Oklahoma, and also Sadiq Long, who is a McAllister native and also a uh, U.S. Air Force veteran who has been in town for, or at least in Oklahoma, for a couple of months. Uh, Adam, can you kind of uh, give our viewers a uh, synopsis of some of the things that have happened to mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Long since he's been here in Oklahoma, or absolutely. maybe even before that? Yeah, absolutely, Carla. Adam Sultani, Executive Director of CARE Oklahoma. Um, Sadiq, you know, he had a lot of troubles traveling uh, back to the United States. Um, we basically gathered that he was on a no-fly list, and through several attempts, we were finally able to get some indication from the Department of Justice with the United States government that he would be able to travel back to the U.S., which he was able to do on November 19th. Um, unfortunately, immediately after arriving back, there was some FBI and, and local police harassment, um, which seems to have somewhat been cleared up ever since um, we went public with that information and the harassment has, has ceased to happen. Um, and now, essentially, he's been here. He came to visit his termini terminally ill mother, spent time with her, uh, spent time with his other family, and now he needs to return back to his wife and, and child in Qatar, where he resides and where he earns his livelihood. Um, the peculiar thing about it is this morning he attempted to board a flight, um, leaving the country, and was unfortunately not allowed to board that airplane. Well, we were not given a reason why. We were told that it is a, a security matter and we'd have to contact the FBI to find out more information. Uh, the perplexing thing about it all is that he was allowed to enter his country. He's an American citizen. He, why is he being barred from leaving his country. And, you know, with CARE Oklahoma, we believe that an American citizen should not be barred from entering or leaving their country without due process of law. So it is of concern to us. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Long, can you uh, give us your thoughts? Were you thinking that you would be able to, to board the plane at some point? You, you mentioned something about they were getting ready to uh, get your uh, boarding pass together. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, yes, my name is Sadiq Long. And uh, as you said, I was f fully prepared. You know, I'd already made plans. I had given uh, the, um, or at least my attorney had forwarded my travel plans to the FBI. And we'd uh, prepared completely for this, uh, this trip. I had already notified my, um, my family in Qatar, my wife and daughter. Uh, I already said my goodbyes to my parents here. And everyone was ready for me to board the airplane. But unfortunately, you know, we were prevented. At least I was prevented. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what happened up to that point. You, the <coughs> agent told you that you could not board the plane. Then what happened? That's right. The agent, uh, actually, he um, said that he would have to, um, I guess, call over the, the, some police officers. As a matter of fact, three of them came, which is a surprise, and it was quite intimidating. Uh, and they came over and had a few words with him. Uh, at that point, they said they would need to call over TSA. Uh, a TSA agent came over and um, he notified me that um, it was a national, I think he said an issue of uh, national security, but I would need to contact the FBI. Uh, and that's all he had to say, really. He said uh, he, he couldn't help, he, help me at all. Okay. What are some of the consequences of uh, what took place today? You mentioned that this has kind of taken a toll for you. Yes, that's right. As well as, uh, you know, my, my whole family, really. You know, my, <clears throat> my mother, as you said, she is uh, uh, quite ill. Uh, she's even more stressed out now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think she told me about less than an hour ago she's headed to the hospital. You know, she's, uh, I think, uh, the past few days, you know, the, this buildup. <clears throat> so she's, uh, after no, hearing that um, they would not let me fly, so of course she's even more worried. Uh, but my family in Qatar, my wife and daughter, they're also crushed because I will not be arriving. And uh, I think I was telling you earlier, I've been on, uh, you know, a vacation here. Uh, uh, over two and a half months, <clears throat> so um, it's it's pretty you know it's pretty frustrating uh, on everyone and everyone is uh, we're all wondering why is this happening and no one's uh, been able to tell us anything. I've been here for a very long time and uh, two and a half months and uh, still nothing. We don't know. You know, it, it seems like it would have been uh, obviously more difficult to come into a place and now going out. That's what's puzzling. Why is this a problem for me to go back out? Okay. 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 And uh, Adam, you mentioned that uh, you, you all are not quite sure why this is, is happening, but you thought 
perhaps it's his faith may have something to do with it. You're just not sure. Yeah, we're, the truth of the matter is we're not sure. Um, we've never been given any indication as to why he was not allowed to fly in the first place. I mean, that was almost a six month long ordeal um, on his own side of contacting government officials and, and tried to, and, and the uh, Department of Homeland Security and, and um, so his U.S. Embassy in Qatar. He never got an answer. When he reached out to us, we still did not receive answers from anyone except for an indication that yes, he would be able to travel back to the U.S. after a certain date, which he did, um, and, and we don't know why. I mean, we, it's speculation that it may may have something to do with his faith, and that is, of course, of utmost concern to us. We don't have very, proof that that is truly the case, but it makes you wonder why is this happening to not only this uh, Muslim individual here in Oklahoma, but it's also happened to other Muslims uh, around the country when they've attempted to return back to their country. I guess the only unique thing here is we we don't have a lot of cases where people return back to the U.S. after being on a no-fly list and again try to travel out. So we're dealing with this for the first time. Okay, okay. And uh, last question, what are your plans now? What, what happens now? Well, I think we're, Sadiq's going to uh, look at rebooking his flight uh, for a future date. Uh, we have an attorney in Washington, D.C. with Care National who's helping us out, and he on, will be uh, in touch with the appropriate agencies to find out if we can get an answer or if we can at least get permission for him to travel again. Uh, we just, as I said, it's, it's confusing, and I think Sadiq would agree. Uh, very, very confusing. Yeah. <coughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. You know, this is. They ha they've had my travel plans from the beginning. They know I live and work there. They know I had to come back here and visit my uh, mother who was sick at the time, and they know I have to return. You know, I have a family, have a, have, and I have a job to get back to. So, um, I, you know, I would just like to, you know, get on with my life. If there's something that I've done, you know, it should have, they've had, you know, plenty of time to find out what it was and to report to us so that we can take it through the, the, the due process. Right. Yes. So um, yeah, that's basically it. We will continue to work with our attorney and with Sadiq to see if we can get him on a, on a future flight to back to Qatar. Yeah. Okay, all right. This is Carla Hinton reporting for The Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. Read more about this issue in The Oklahoman.